The Allied bomber stream feared the FW-190. Its speed and heavy armament was revered and its survivability made it a favourite with German pilots. The upgrades that the A6 and A8 variants received in 1943-44 made the fighter an excellent bomber killer and ground attack aircraft. In this IL-2 guide, I'll explain the important aspects that I wish I knew before I started flying. The characteristics of the aircraft included a good dive speed, an extraordinary roll rate and the ability to take a lot of hits. The good dive speed came from its radial engine, the BMW 801D, with a top speed of 563 km per That radial engine also gave the aircraft the ability to take a lot of damage before an engine failure occurred, a lot more punishment compared to the liquid-cooled BF109 engine. The high roll rate is attributed to its short wingspan, which gave it the ability to make twitch aileron changes in a high-speed dive, making it perfect for a boom and zoom attack which the pilots used to good effect on the Allied bomber streams. Whilst booming and zooming, keep the turn smooth and without shuddering to keep the speed and momentum high to maximise the tactic. The one thing to avoid with the FW-190 are low speed and or turning fights. You will have no chance against late war allied and Soviet aircraft like the late model Spitfire and Mustangs. The aircraft will stall without warning if not handled smoothly and within limits. Two important aspects of the fighter you also need to know about is the visibility and tailwheel. The visibility of the FW-190 is good until you get targets in front of you. The canopy structure gives the pilot only a small view area to see the target in front. Deflection shots are for the most part shots in the dark. It didn't really matter against bomber streams or clueless fighters, but the deflection shot with its high angle of attack will make it very difficult. The tail wheel was a surprise to me. It's automatic in that if you keep the elevator in a climb position, the wheel locks, but as soon as you go back to level, it unlocks. This causes the aircraft to become highly unstable, especially during landing. A tip to combat this is when landing, keep the stick back for as long as you can before you reach normal taxiing speed. The important gauges to remember is the airspeed indicator, altitude, fuel gauges with the front tank on the left and rear tank on the right, engine temps, and ammo counters. Instead of going through all of the modifications available, I'm just going to tell you which ones that I prefer to use for both the A6 and A8 variants. For the A6, I would just keep it to how it is, I don't really see much point in changing the armament unless I want to get bomb pods or anything like that. For the A8, however, I would definitely have 30mm gun pods as standard. They take up bombers in one hit, and they don't really affect performance that much. Overall, the FW-190 A6 and A8 are both very good aircraft. The A8, however, is one of my favourite aircrafts to fly, just because of those deadly 30mm cannons, which tears bombers to shreds. They're not really very good against fighters, but if you've got the advantage over them, they can easily one-hit fighters pretty easily. But again, you do need to be in a good position to boom and zoom the enemy fighters. And my last point is a reminder to not turn fight with this aircraft. And that is all to the FW-190. If you enjoyed the video, please give this video a like down below, as well as comment what aircraft you want me to do a beginner's guide on next.